Hi, in this video we'll be talking about simple interests. We'll be comparing ordinary versus exact interests and approximate time versus actual time. So let's start. Ordinary interest is calculated on the basis of 360 day year or a 30 day month, while exact interest is calculated on a 365 day year. The interest formulas for both ordinary and exact interests are actually the same with time slightly differing when given as number of days. So what does this mean? Let's look at it on a broader perspective. So if we have ordinary interest, one year is equal to 360 days. Now this affects the formula for simple interest. Say for example, I is equal to PRT, where I is the simple interest, P is the principal amount, R is the rate, and T for time. Now for the time, notice now that this is written in fraction, and we have to express the days given in terms of year. To do that, we now divide the days by 360 days. For exact interest, one year is equal to 365 days. Thus, for the formulas for simple interest and final amount, time t is now written in this manner such that the divisor for the number of days should be an exact 365 days. And that's the difference of ordinary interest and exact interest. Let's look at approximate time and actual time. For approximate time, this refers to the approximate number of days of a given time, where one month is now equivalent to 30 days, meaning the month of January up to December is always equal to 30 days. Thus, one year is exactly 300 days. For actual time, this refers to the actual number of days in a month or year. So if we have one year, this will be equivalent to 365 days. Or if it's a leap year, this is 366 days because February becomes 29 days. Okay? Note as well that we have 31 days for the month of January, March, May, July, August, October, and December. And we have 30 days for the month of April, June, September, and November. For the month of February, it is 28 days if it's not a leaping year and it becomes 29 days if it's a leap year. That's the perspective of approximate time and actual time. Let's look at some example. So let's compute for the approximate time and actual time from January 31st, 2020 up to March 31st, 2021. So to do that on approximate time, we write the year, the month, and the date. We start with the latest date, March 31st, 2021 followed by the initial date January 31st 2020 and it should look like this so this is March 31st 2021 and this is January 31st 2020 we take the difference so we have 31 minus 31 that would be 0 3 minus 1 that would be 2 and 2021 minus 2020 is 1 so we have one year two months and zero days one year should be multiplied to 360 and two months should be multiplied to 30 days. The result now should be 360 and 60. So we have one year as 360 and two months as 60 days. We take the summation and this would be 420 days. So the approximate time from January 31st, 2020 to March 31st, 2021 is 420 days. For the actual time, notice that January 31st, 2020 up to January 31st, 2021 is equal to one year. So one year is equal to 366. How? I thought it was 365. Well, note that the year 2020 is actually a leap year, meaning February has 29 days. That is why we have one year is equal to 366 days. So we have covered up to January 31st, 2021, the month of February 2021. There is a remaining day of 28 days and the month of March up to 31st, 2021, we have 31 days. If you take the summation, 366 plus 28 plus 31, it should give you a total number of days of 400. 25 days. So that's the perspective of approximate time and actual time. 
let's use this example in problem solving so we can see the difference when we compute this for simple interests. We have problem number one. Determine the final amount if you have invested a principal amount of 15000 from January 31st, 2020 to March 31st, 2021 with an interest rate of 2.85% and year is equal to 360 days. So this is obviously an ordinary interest because we are defining one year as 360 days. So let's look at the given. The principal amount is 15000 The rate is 2.85%. In decimal is 0 0.0285. And for the time, it's not actually specified whether we are going to use approximate time or actual time. For this example, we'll be doing both. And that would be for actual time, that's 420 days over 360. Take note that we already computed the actual and the approximate time for this date. It is divided by 360 because it's an ordinary interest and one year is defined as 360 days. So this fraction here is now expressed in year. In a similar manner for the actual time, this would now be 425 days divided by 360 days. So let's look at the solution. We start with ordinary interest using approximate time. We have your formula. Since F is the unknown, or the final amount, we now make use of the formula for F. Step 2 is to substitute it properly, and then step 3, compute using your calculator. You should end up with 15,498.75. In a similar manner, in computing ordinary interest using actual time, you have this solution. Take note of the time. It's actual time, and this is approximate time. When you plug this in, in your calculator, it should give you 15,504.69. If the problem specifies that you need to use approximate time, then this should only be your solution. Same goes with actual time. This should only be your solution. So that's problem number one. I also played with this example. I made use of same given, but one year is now defined as 365 days. So notice now the time is written in this manner. The denominator is 365 days. As well as the solution for approximate time and actual time. So you should end up with this following final answer. Problem number three. Sean lends 50,000 pesos to Jane on October 1st, 2019. He expects Jane to pay the principal and simple interest at 12% to fully settle the debt on March 28, 2020. How much will Sean receive? It's clearly defined that one year is equal to 365 days, so this should be exact interest. Let's look at the given. So we have P is equal to 50,000, R is 12%, or in decimal value, it's 0 0.12, and the time since it's not clear that it's an approximate time or actual time, I'll be utilizing this time. From October 1st, 2019 to March 28, 2020, the approximate number of days is 177. Divide that by the definition of one year, 365 days, then that's the time. If you make use of an exact or actual time, then you should have 179 over 365. How did I get these values? Let me show it to you. So for approximate time, I have March 28, 2020 minus October 1st, 2019. So I have the days. 28 minus 1 is 27. 3 minus 10 can't be deducted. So I'll borrow 12 months from year. So this becomes 2019. And this becomes plus 12 months. So meaning this is a total of 15 months. So 15 months minus 10 months is 5 months. So this is months and this is days. Now multiply months by 30 days and the result should be 150 days plus 27 days. The total should be 177 days. And that would be the approximate time. For actual time, I started listing October 2019 up to March 2020. Then let me count the remaining days for 
October. October have 31 days, but we have to subtract the specific date specified on this problem. So remove one, so you end up with 30 days remaining on October 2019. For November, you have a total of 31 days. December, you have a total of 31 days. I'm sorry, November should be 30 days. There you go. And for January, you have a total of 31 days. February, since this is a leap year, you have 29 days. And March, you end up on March 28. So that's 28. You take the sum, 30, 30, 31, 31, 29, and 28. This should be 179 days. So this is the exact or actual time of this date. Now let's compute exact interest using the approximate time. So I'll start with this using t is equal to 177 over 365. I have my formula since we are looking for the final amount. That's a question mark. So f is equal to the principal multiplied to the quantity 1 plus the product of rt. Now substitute the given properly. p is 50,000, r is 0.12, and t is 177 over 365, plug this in on your calculator and you end up with 52,909.59. Same goes with exact interest using actual time. You should end up with this value, 52,942.47, using the actual time, 179 over 365. Now the worry here of most students is that it's confusing to do it on the calculator. So let me show you two ways of computing it. Okay, so let me try to solve this value, 52,942.47. So the first way you could simplify this is to simply copy everything if your calculator allows you to do so. So in my calculator, it does. So I'll simply copy 50,000 multiplied to open parenthesis, 1 plus... Then the product of this two, 0.12 multiplied to, this is a fraction, so let me place my fraction form. And that's 179 divided by 365. And then position my cursor over here, place my close parenthesis, okay? Don't get confused, I have 0 0.12 and I have 0.12 over here. This is correct. I can also place zero. It's just the same. Now I have completed my input. I'm going to press my equal sign. And the result is 52,942.47. That's rounded off to two decimal place. Another way of arriving to this value, if my calculator doesn't allow me to simply copy everything, then I can start with the fraction form over here, the time. So I have 179 divided by 365 and then equals so I have this value on your calculator if you divide 179 by 365 it's a decimal value of 0 0.4904 now multiply this to 0 0.12 so times 0 0.12 and then you have this value decimal value of 0 0.058849315685 so that's this fraction I'm going to add this 1 plus 1 and press enter. On your calculator again, it's going to show 1.0588 and so on. So you now multiply this value to, to this principal amount of 50,000. Let me show that. So this decimal value is the same as this fraction. I'm going to multiply this to the principal amount 50,000 press enter and it should give me the exact value 52,942.47 rounded off to two decimal place. So there you go. Simple interest, the concept of exact and ordinary interest together with approximate time and actual time. If this video was helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe and thank you for watching.